Welcome to our online presentation, Iceland, Four Season Destination. And here to tell you more about this fabulous country and all that it can offer to your clients is Judy Hurst. Welcome, Judy. Hello, everyone. So glad that you could join me today. Good morning to my people on the West Coast. Good afternoon to my people on the East Coast. I am thrilled and delighted that so many of you have uh, shown an interest in Iceland and want to learn a little bit more. So we're going to talk about Iceland, try to give you as much information as you can absorb. I'm going to try to keep it to a 40-minute time frame. We may go a little bit over, but we are going to answer questions at the end. Just want you uh, to have my contact information, both my phone number, my email address, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as Iceland Travels website and their email address. And I do want to make mention for credibility purposes for those of us who are agents from the Signature Travel Network that we are a destination specialist, preferred supplier for that. And also another interesting thing I don't know if you're aware of, when you look at supplier member of USTOA, I don't know if you realize, but in order for a company to have that stamp of approval, it they have to post a bond of $1 million. So when you're dealing with any tour operators, make sure you see that USTOA, because I think that's really important for you to know about. On our website, this is the homepage of Iceland Travel's website. We are a DMC, a destination management company. We are also the largest and oldest inbound land operator. We have both scheduled and custom tours throughout Iceland as well as Greenland. Keep that in mind. This is what you're seeing now. This is the home page of our website. It's a little bit different. We've made some new changes to it, but this is the most important section for you to be aware of the agent section. I really hope that at some point you go onto the website and register. By going into that area of the website, you're going to have access to photos, to information, to new pricing, to all kinds of proprietary information. So please take a moment after our later today to sign into that. Iceland, how to get there? Well, first let me tell you that it's a lot closer than people think it is. We're actually the closest point in Europe to the United States. You can see that there are nine gateways in North America where flights are operated from Iceland Air. The newest being Denver. We're going to start Denver service in May. Here's what you probably don't realize. From Seattle, the flight to Iceland is seven hours. Denver is going to be six, and from points on the East Coast, believe it or not, it's less than five hours. Most people that um, come to Iceland, the stay is usually about five days. I'm going to back up one second to this slide. What I want to show you, too, with Iceland Air, free stopovers are permitted for through passengers who may be continuing on to the continent of Europe. Iceland Air permits passengers to have a free stopover in Iceland for up to seven days. So your clients are getting two destinations for the price of one. They have beautiful aircraft. You can see that each seat has their own screen in the back. They have three classes of service and this referring only five hours to Iceland is definitely referring of course to the East Coast. Time zone, that's another interesting thing I want to tell you about. The time in Iceland, it is only five hours later than the east coast of the United States. So if you're in New York City, it's five hours later. It's basically a little bit earlier than European time. Here is a map of Iceland. You can see it's an island, very jagged, rugged coastline. Reykjavik is right over here, and I do want to point out our infamous volcano, because we do get a lot of questions about the volcano, which actually caused very little disruption in Iceland itself. The day after um, the volcano erupted, we were already doing tours to that area. Unfortunately, the rest of Europe, as you are well aware, suffered for quite a while from the ash flowing. And this is the main glacier. Um, pronunciation, I can't tell you that I've got the right pronunciation, but a yokel, 
is our main glacier and believe it or not this is one of the largest glaciers in the world so you can see getting around there is a ring road the red line is what they call the ring road it is possible to drive completely around the island well there is no place else on earth like Iceland it is really quite different in topography landscape it's a very small island actually in size it's about the size of Kentucky the picture that you're seeing here is the infamous Blue Lagoon we have spectacular nature everyone in Iceland speaks English the climate is a lot more temperate than you think it is they call us the land of midnight sun and northern lights and I'll show you a slide the next one that's uh, going to make that a little bit clearer to you but we are also one of the cleanest places on earth due to hydroelectric and geothermal energy. This is another shot of the Blue Lagoon. It is a natural, it is a, a mineral hot spring that everyone goes into. The slide before where you saw the white on everybody's face, this is silica and it's a natural uh, element that is in the bottom of the Blue Lagoon and what you do it's very very soft and velvety and cushy when you're walking on it and the water of course is really quite warm but what you do around the perimeter of the blue lagoon itself they have wooden boxes and the wooden boxes are filled with this white silica gel and you are encouraged to put it on your face not around obviously around your eyes not in your eyes but around your eyes on your arms and you leave it on for about 15 minutes or so then you dip down in the water and wash it off. It's a natural exfoliant, and your skin is absolutely velvety smooth when you come out. You can spend a half a day. You can spend an hour in the Blue Lagoon. You can actually, they even have accommodations. You can stay overnight. People go here either on the way to or from the airport. The Blue Lagoon is located very close to the airport. So in many cases, it's the first or last activity on your trip. There is a, there are actually two restaurants there, very nice, good food, very reasonably priced, and of course there is a gift shop, and that's where you're going to spend the bulk of your money buying these absolutely beautiful products. I don't think they're for sale in the United States. They may be online, but they're not in any stores in the United States, so definitely stock up while you're there. Let's talk about the best time to go to Iceland. That's probably the question that I get the most. And I think what you really mean when you say what's the best time, I think you're referring to temperature. So I think this may be a good eye opener for you. When you look at the temperatures, this is Fahrenheit. You can see that it's not as cold as people think it is. It's really relatively warm. Because of our location on the Gulf Stream, we really do get moderate temperatures. Um, you do see the coldest ever, warmest ever. This is another interesting thing for you to notice, and that's the hours of daylight. As you can see in the winter months, there are not a great many hours of daylight, but as you progress through the year, when you come to June, July, and August, you'll see that the sun is out most of the time. That's why we have the name Midnight Sun. The northern lights you can only see in the winter months, and that's because there is so much darkness, and it is a natural phenomenon, so we're not going to be able to guarantee that it's going to happen, but it's a fun activity to go and look for the northern lights. When it comes to nature, we have over 10,000 waterfalls. We've got, of course, the volcanoes, the mineral hot springs. Yes, we do have beaches, and I think that's a big surprise to people, some of which are black sand, and of course, we do have the Blue Lagoon. Very, very rugged coastlines. Spectacular. I don't know if they're basalt or actually what they, um, actually that might be lava. Can't, I'm not sure on that, but that's a beautiful, beautiful shot. We also have these beautiful, serene, glacial lagoons. This is fantastic. Very, very popular spot. Obviously, you can see for photography. Iceland is a great destination for photographers. Hiking, oh, lots of activity for hiking. And this is really popular. You can actually do this year round. 
more in the winter, um, but people are doing this year round. You can actually go out onto the glaciers and hike. We do have, and again, I'm not I'm not going to try to pronounce some of these words because I don't want to insult myself or my Icelandic friends and colleagues who are listening, but we do have the National Park, which is the UNESCO World Heritage Site, which gives you a great view of the greenery, the tranquil valleys, as well as the beautiful mountain scenery. Fishing. I bet that's something you might not have thought about. It, one of the purposes of this seminar is to educate you on the destination, but also to give you ideas of how to sell it to your clients. Who can you recommend and suggest Iceland to? Definitely people who are into game fishing. The salmon fishing is fantastic. There is trout fishing. There is arctic char. There's a lot of different fish in the waters, and of course, the water is crystal clear. And you know what? In the summertime, you can actually go fishing at midnight because the sun is up. Kayaking, absolutely, we have great kayaking. We can get you around in many different ways. There is small aircraft to take you all around the island of Iceland. We can certainly do it through a helicopter. And look, wait till you see the next shot. If I can get up, there we go. I'll tell you, how, how is that for getting around in style? I think that's pretty cool myself. I think I'd like to do that. I haven't done that particular activity yet, but I sure would like to. When we continue on, we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, which is food. And everybody asks, what kind of food? What can I get in Iceland? What am I going to eat? You are going to eat some of the best food you've ever tasted in the world due to the fact that there is no pollution. The waters are crystal clear. You have incredible seafood that is basically caught every day. The dairy products are grown organic and hormone free. And one of the most interesting things that I did in relation to food was to take a tour of these greenhouses. There is not a lot of earth that fruits and vegetables can grow in, so that they have these huge greenhouses where fruits and vegetables are grown hydroponically, which means no pesticides and no chemicals. So that's another great thing for you to keep in mind. Every kind of cuisine imaginable. We do have Asian, we do have Indian, we have vegetarian. And here's a bit of the local cuisine. This is a local hot dog. And it is a blend of several different meats. Lamb is also very big in Iceland. It's called pulsar. Very economical thing for you to eat. You can see it's under $3. It's a very popular fast food. We don't have the typical fast foods. You're not going to find a lot of McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, Kentucky Fried. No, you're going to give that up for the few days that you're in Iceland. The water, oh goodness, it's pure glacier water. It's absolutely fantastic. Here's a little bit of trivia for you. Iceland holds the Guinness Book of World Records for the most consumption of Coca-Cola in the world. Why? I finally found out why. I mean, I like Coke, but you know, it's why because the bottling um, factories in Iceland, they're using the glacial waters. So it does have a little bit of a better taste and it's absolutely fantastic. So you'll be drinking a lot of Coca-Cola. You don't have to stick with fast food. We have a world-class gourmet cuisine. As I said, just about every type of cuisine that you can think of in the world is available to your clients. They don't have to eat strange things like petrified shark. They can actually eat some of the best seafood. And I'm telling you, I had fantastic, fantastic meals. And when it comes to some other products locally, and this you can actually get in the United States. I've seen skier yogurt and I've seen Ziggy's available in Whole Foods. And for those of you that are interested in the alcoholic side of things, we do have local beer, we have local Grinovan, and of course we do have our own brand of vodka. We're going to move on a little bit and talk about the capital. This is an absolutely beautiful shot of Reykjavik. Reykjavik is relatively small. It's a charming Scandinavian town, immaculately clean and amazingly safe. There is virtually no crime in Iceland. And I know when your clients travel, they're concerned about 
different parts of the world and is it safe to go there and can I walk around at night? I will tell you that Iceland is fantastic for that. You can walk around at any hour of the day or night and not be afraid. It is just a fantastic destination and it is great for outdoors, it is great for spas and Iceland Travel has a lot of different packages that we can put together for your clients and uh, create custom itineraries for them. As we said, friendly people, everyone in Iceland speaks English and 98% of the population is college educated. It is very fashion forward, it is very trendy in that regard and lots of museums, lots of galleries, boutiques and then I want to show you this beautiful shot. This is a church. It is a Lutheran church and it is one of the landmarks of Iceland and it is right in the center of Reykjavik. It's about 250 feet high. You can see it. You can actually go up into the bell tower. You can walk the steps or you can take an elevator. But the reward at the top is some of the best views imaginable of Reykjavik. It's an absolutely stunning thing. It took about 45 years to actually build this church. The name of it, mm, here we go. Husband, your eyes can't do it. Just can't do it. Paul Grimm's. I'm sorry, my Icelandic friends. I've tried, I've practiced, but it's not so easy. That's a challenge in Iceland. Good thing everyone speaks English. Okay, four season destination. Let me give you some idea of activities, what you can do different times of the year. Of course, we are bathed in nature everywhere that we go. We do have all kinds of super trucks, jeeps, helicopters, and more of course. And what I do want to tell you, and I may have uh, not mentioned this earlier, but when it comes to Iceland travel, we are a land operator. We do scheduled programs that pay 15% commission. We also do fly drive itineraries, and we certainly can assist with custom itineraries. For your clients who are interested in animal life and nature, whale watching is superb. These adorable birds are called puffins, and they are over 10 million puffins all around Iceland. So it is definitely great for your clients who are interested in bird watching. And now we come to my personal favorite, Icelandic horses. Oh, they are so fabulous. They are wonderful, gentle creatures. And yes, that picture is taken in Iceland on a beach. I'm trying to show you things that you didn't think existed in Iceland. These horses are endemic to Iceland and over centuries they have evolved into short stocky horses. They have five gates instead of four so when you go into a gallop mode it's not quite the same. It's, it's an easier ride. It's a softer ride. They are gentle. They are friendly. Um, the owners of the horses do permit them to roam free in the countryside. They're very humanized, so if you're on a fly drive, if you're out on a tour and you see a herd of horses, they're not really wild horses. Stop, they will come right up to you. They, they are just absolutely friendly. You can see we do have a horse festival. There are a lot of different festivals that I'm going to mention, again, trying to give you some ideas of who you can suggest Iceland to. You've got to find out what your client's interests are, but I am pretty sure we've got something to satisfy almost everyone. I feel like their hair. Look at the bangs. Wow. They're great. Some other activities. We're going back to the snow. Do you know that you can actually go snowmobiling on the glaciers? You can go river rafting, snorkeling, skiing. There are so many wonderful activities. It is, Iceland is definitely an outdoor destination. The fishing, the hiking, the caving, we now have spelunking. I haven't done that myself yet, but we even have scuba diving and golfing. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that in just a moment. On the cultural side, this is our brand new Harpa concert hall. I had the pleasure of going to visit Harpa just before it opened and it is utterly magnificent. It's 12 sided and it's all glass and steel. It's right on the waterfront so you have spectacular views of the mountain and of the ocean. Lots of good concerts take place. 
there. If you're looking for Christmas, I'm going to tell you where to find it, and it's in Iceland. This um, picture that you see right here with all the fireworks, that's New Year's Eve. It's a very big deal. Christmas in Iceland is a very special holiday, and it lasts for 30 days, basically the whole month of December. There are 13 Santa Clauses that look a little bit more like elves, not quite like our Santa Claus. And each one comes, has their own day. So it's 13 days arriving, then they're there for a week, and then there's 13 days that they leave. And the lucky Icelandic children get gifts every day. And then the culmination, of course, is New Year's Eve with this spectacular fireworks display. When it comes to festivals, concerts, there is a world famous concert called Airwaves. It's a music festival and it takes place as you can see the dates for this coming year. We are looking at October through November 4th. Very, very popular and a lot of great acts come from all over the world. We have a Viking festival, of course. Believe me, when you learn, go to Iceland and learn a little bit more about the Vikings. They're really fascinating people and um, we, we owe them a lot. They're, they're quite interesting folk and what they've done. We have a jazz festival. We have a film festival. We have a fashion festival. There's all kinds of activities. Here's one of the ones that I bet you never even thought of. For all of your clients who are golfers, who may be looking for somewhere new to play golf, we have the Arctic Open, which takes place the end of June, and tea time is midnight. Anyone can sign up to play in the Arctic Open. It's just a registration fee. But this is something that during the summer months of June and July, it is possible because of the limited hours of darkness. Basically, it's daylight most of the time. You're actually able to play golf. At midnight, there are over 60 golf courses across Iceland, and they're really in very good shape. So think about that. I'm sure your clients haven't done that. Probably their friends haven't done it either. On the other extreme, in the winter, that's when you see these spectacular northern lights. We do offer tours, scheduled tours, where we go out into the countryside. It's a little bit easier to see the northern lights when you're away from the city. So we do offer all kinds of northern lights exploratory tours, but remember, it's Mother Nature and it's up to her when she decides to show us her glory, but it is utterly spectacular. They're not always green. Sometimes they're pinky, sometimes they're purple. And of course, Iceland's not the only place that you can see the Northern Lights, but it is probably the best place. That's what I'm gonna say. Okay, summer, we're jumping back and forth, summer, winter, I wanna give you all kinds of ideas. Escorted tours, as I mentioned, Iceland Travel pays 15% commission. We do have self-drive tours, and we can arrange fly-drive itineraries. City breaks are um, for people who are continuing on, like the stopovers, if they're continuing on to the continent of Europe. We have some very excellently priced programs. Some of them uh, are two nights, some are three nights, depends what your client wants. And then, of course, the day tours. So people can base themselves in Reykjavik and go outside back and forth every day to do their touring. Accommodations. You can see from these stunning photos that we do have some absolutely luxury products to sell to your clients. The hotel up here is the Hotel Borg. We have the 101. We have the Radisson. And I wanted to also address, there was a question about the Hotel Centrum. I do not have a, a visual of the Hotel Centrum, but one of the agents asked, they have clients staying at the Hotel Centrum and wanted to know what we thought of it. It is an excellent property. It's right in the heart of Reykjavik. Right outside your door are all the restaurants, the shops, the museums. Very, very good location. It is a very moderately priced property. I definitely think your clients are in good hands staying there. The Iceland Air Group also owns several hotels in Iceland, and they are fantastic. The Nordica has become a Hilton, which is wonderful. Um, the uh, just 
Lost Leader. I just lost my head for a moment. The Lost Leader has been renamed and it is redone. It is spectacular. So there are quite a number of choices for you. When you get outside to the countryside, outside of Reykjavik, you'll find the hotels a little bit more modest. They are wonderfully clean, immaculate. Food is out of this world, but they're not quite as luxurious as the ones that you're going to find here. This one is an exception. This is the Hotel Dimmer. It is in the countryside. That's G-L-Y-M-E-R. It is in the countryside, and it is definitely an upscale luxury product. So we're here not only for your individual clients for FITs. We're here for the high-end luxury. We are here for your incentives, your conferences, your groups. Don't forget the cruise lines. There are so many cruise lines now that are stopping in Reykjavik and Iceland Travel is the company that is doing all of the shore excursions. We can definitely work with you for pre or post stopover we can also do private shore excursions. So keep us in mind for that. I'm sure you recognize many of these logos, but these are all the cruise lines, or I should say these are most of the cruise lines that are presently stopping in Reykjavik. Everyone absolutely loves the destination and they all want to come back and do more, um, you know, more land touring. So what I'd like to do at this point is just to summarize briefly when to visit Iceland. Hopefully from the temperature chart, you've seen that temperature-wise, it's pretty much a year-round destination. But in the winter, what you're going to find, that's the only time your clients will have the ability to see the northern lights. The culture season, there are a lot of festivals taking place in the winter season. The art and music festivals take place then. And of course, it's going to be a little bit more exciting to do the glacier adventures and skiing. And of course, Christmas and New Year's. Summer season. Well, you can just see from the images up here, we've got the midnight sun, so you can be out almost 24 hours a day in daylight. The whale watching, the bird watching for our puffins, the nature sightseeing, the geysers, the glaciers, the waterfalls, the fishing, the hiking. A few facts that I would just like to leave you with. Iceland is closer than you think. Iceland is warmer than you thought it was going to be. Iceland is five hours ahead of New York as far as time zone. The currency, the Icelandic currency is the Icelandic kroner. We are not working on the Euro system. Everyone speaks English. Iceland is a very safe destination. And Iceland is waiting to welcome you and your clients. We'd love to see you in Iceland. I want to uh, address, there was another question about agent rates. And this might be a good time to mention it. Iceland Air does have agent rates. You can book it yourself on their website under the agent login. If you do that, come to Iceland Travel after that, and we will take care of working up a good price for you on your land accommodations if you want unscheduled or if you want something that will be customized. Here is your first word in Icelandic. It's a really easy one. I took the easiest one I could find. Tuck. It's thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for learning about our great destination. We hope that this has been informative to you and giving you a little bit of confidence in suggesting the destination to your clients. I think you will be surprised if you suggest it. How many people are going to say, you know, I always wanted to go to Iceland. I wanted to put up my contact information again for you. I am the North America sales representative. I do travel around the country. I will do sales calls. I can do presentations. If you would like to set up some consumer evenings, if you have any trade shows coming up, or somewhere where you would like to promote Iceland and would like to see if we're available to join you, please get in touch with me. I am heading, my next sales trip is to Illinois. 
the end of this month. So if there's anyone out there in Illinois, it might be possible that I can do a sales call to your office. I'm going to be in Florida in May and in northern New Jersey in April. And then the rest of the seat, the rest of the year is up for grabs. So wherever you want me, that's where I'm going to go. I truly hope that you have found these 30 minutes to be educational, somewhat entertaining. I could really go on and on talking about Iceland and the fabulous adventures I've had there, but I know that everyone is busy. Thank heavens again these days. So I thank you, and I think Lee's going to step in, and we're going to open it up if you have any questions that I might not have been able to answer so far. Yes, indeed. My goodness, we've got 68 questions in the queue, uh -oh. Judy. Uh -oh. <laughs> But lots of tremendous compliments on what a wonderful presentation it was, beautiful photos and so forth. So um, lots of lots of nice compliments. <clears throat> um, so let me look down through here. Um, this is from Lisa. During the free during a free stopover, uh, I would like to have a private tour. Does Iceland Travel provide this kind of service? Absolutely. That's what we do. We have, as I mentioned, we do not only the schedule, but we absolutely do custom private touring. So we can definitely arrange that for you. Okay. Very good. Uh, Julie would like to know if clients can purchase the silica gel that you mentioned and bring it home. They have, well, Yes and no. Yes, they can purchase it. Absolutely. The gift shop at the Blue Lagoon is unbelievable. You will spend a lot of money, but a tip, there's a lot of testers. So it's it's a fun place to play, uh, not just for women, for men. And you can bring the things home. Again, it's going to go back to um, the standard rules, the TSA rules of the size. So if you are having checked luggage, there is no problem. If you're having carry-on, you're still going to have to stick with the small size. And that just reminded me of something I forgot to say on Iceland Air. They do not charge for luggage. So that's another reason to suggest them for clients traveling on to the continent of Europe. Mm, that's great. Um, here's a question from Julianne. Uh, how long does it take to get to the glacier? I believe you were talking about that early on in your presentation. The glacier, it depends. I, a lot of people want to stay in Reykjavik itself rather than tour the countryside. If you stay in Reykjavik and you're going to drive out to the glacier, it's good because of the um, rugged coastline and, and they don't have super highways, it's going to take quite a while. You're going to spend a lot of time going back and forth. It could take you four hours to get out to the glacier. If you take the scheduled tours, there are several tours that take two or three days to get out to the glacier because you're stopping along the way for other activities and sightseeing. Hmm, okay. Now, this is a question from John or Don, excuse me, about car rentals. What is the upper age limit for car rentals and is an international driver's permit required? The upper age. Oh, that's an interesting question. I don't think I've ever had that question before. I'm going to have to, unfortunately, research this. I do not know the answer to that. And okay. your, your, your stateside license is sufficient. Okay. Probably in that case, if you've got a stateside license, I would no, think, I, I, even I if you're 90 or 100. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've not been asked. I'll tell you the challenge with the fly drive. Absolutely wonderful to do. The roads are paved, they're easy. There is, as I mentioned, there's really one main road that goes around the island. The challenge are the signs and trying to read them. As, as you can see from some of the things I tripped over, the language, the Icelandic language is a little bit difficult. Um, so that could, but when we draw up your, if Iceland Travel does your itinerary, your fly drive itinerary, we give you mileage, we tell you, we give you all the, the landmarks and everything so we make it as easy as possible for you mm. and what about what uh what about what side of the road uh same what side that, of the road same, is, side. same, same side. side yeah yeah that's good okay um this is a question about uh, whether the tap water is drinkable in Reykjavik hotels or do you recommend bottled water as i i i, I might not have been real clear on it but this is some of the clearest water, most unpolluted, 
destination you could imagine. Absolutely, it is safe. It is fabulous to drink the water right out of the tap. It's absolutely wonderful, ice cold water. Mm. No yeah, problem sounds, at all. Yeah. I mean, it they sell fun. bottled water because our society has become in such a way that we're so used to now drinking bottled water because most places you can't drink out of the tap. Mm -hmm. They do have their own bottled water up there, and you're circum certainly welcome to buy it, but it isn't necessary. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and a question here from Cheryl. Are the geysers all in one area, or are they spread throughout the country? Uh, it's across the whole countryside. All of the, we, the geysers, the glaciers, the mineral hot springs, they are throughout and across the entire island. There are those that are closer to Reykjavik that are included on the tours, again, because they don't take quite as long to get to. Mm -hmm. And uh, Arnie's wondering about non-glacial hiking. Is it possible to do a cross-island type hike? It's possible, yes. Um, Got to be in good shape. The terrain is not exactly flat. Um, again, this one, um, I'm going to say that we do have some people at the Iceland Travel Office who are far better versed on this activity than I am. So rather than give you misinformation, I'm going to put that down that we're going to do a follow-up for that, okay? Mm, perfect, perfect, thank you. Um, okay, let's see, does uh, Iceland Air, uh, let's see, I know, I know you're familiar with Iceland Air and I would imagine that uh, agents can, can contact Iceland Travel to, to help with Air, but are there some special uh, consolidator rates that might be available through Iceland Travel? At this moment in time, and, and I'm, I'm going to say it that way because there are some changes um, possibly down the road. At this moment in time, Iceland Travel does not get involved with booking flights. Okay. That would be done with Iceland Air, and then we'll revert to Iceland Travel for the land activities. Okay, very good. There are tour operators, and uh, let me say that my distinction between a tour operator and a land operator is that tour operators do indeed book the international flights. There are many tour operators who you can work with. They, in turn, use Iceland Air for the land portion. So that if you don't want to go through two different steps of working with Iceland Air and then Iceland Travel, there are tour operators. And actually, I'm going to add that, I think, to my webinar. Next time, I'm going to get a slide with all the list or a list of the more popular ones that you can utilize to go through. Um, and they can, of course, it's one phone call, and they can take care of everything. Okay. Um, Heather has a group that wants to go in 2012, but they, they want to do sort of the low budget, low cost experience, possibly going to hostels or, or so forth, um, okay. touring maybe with, maybe without a guide. Is that something Iceland Travel could help with? They can definitely assist with that. Um, all different price ranges that you will find. There are a lot of the smaller countryside hotels, and yes, right in Reykjavik there are some hostels, and they can certainly make all those arrangements for you. They do have those lists available. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. I want, while we're talking about a, a more of a low end, I, I did want to mention that you, if you noticed in the slide way back when, I'm not sure that I can do this, but let me see if I can, if I can get this up, see how good I am. On the slide here, that's the island, there is something, there are two different, there are buses. If, if people really want to do this, the low end, it's sort of like backpacking across Europe. It would be people that would take like a URL pass. This would be the equivalent in Iceland. There is a bus called the Iceland Express that actually is like a hop on, hop off. You buy a pass for 10 or 14 days. And you can literally go completely around the island. You're on your own. You're independent. You would make your own ways uh, of getting around after you get there. But that is another option for people who want to do um, Iceland, you know, in a very low-cost way. Okay, that's great to know. 
So uh, there have been several questions here about the seasons, and I, I think people are just trying to wrap their head around whether the seasons are the same as they would be in the United States. So is winter in the U.S. also winter in Iceland? Yes, it is. Absolutely. And I'll take put this up. This is probably the most popular slide in the whole presentation that everybody wants to see. It is the same, yes. And you can see that by the temperatures. The warmer temperatures are going to be pretty much in the uh, May, June, July, and August, September season. This is the most popular time of the year that we do get the bulk of tourists. It, it's pretty much here. Those that want to see the northern lights have to come earlier or later in the year. Mm -hmm. OK. What currency is used in Iceland? It's called the Icelandic kroner, K-R-O-N. U R, and the last time I checked, one U.S. dollar was 125 Icelandic kroner. So we're not working on euros. All right. And uh, the snowmobiling, snowmobiling tours. Um, I would assume that uh, guests are properly outfitted with whatever gear they might need when they take those tours. Do they need to bring it with them? Um, the gear. Um, Hmm. All right, that's another stumper. I'm trying to think because basically you don't really need much of anything when you're on the snowmobile. It, you would need boots. That is something you'd have to bring your own boots. And I would suggest some type of uh, outer jacket, again, depending on the time of year that you do it. The snowmobiling takes place pretty much in the winter season. The, um, there is snowmobiling on the glacier and that you can actually do year round. But uh, remember, you're still going to be around the ice, so it is going to be a little bit cooler. So you're still going to want some kind of a, a jacket, some gloves, things like that. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, so since we're talking a little bit about clothes, there was a question here about packing suggestions. Mm -hmm. um, again, this is going to be very subjective, depending on the time of year that you're going, depending on the activities, if you're going to plan activities where you're outside a good part of the day or if you're just going to go on a schedule tour where you're just going to jump out of the, the coach and then just go take a few pictures of the waterfalls and go back in. So it is a little bit dependent, I think, on the time of year and the activities that your clients are doing. Best suggestion always is dress in layers. I tend to bring with me, now I, I've been there mostly in the winter season or in the fall. I haven't really been to Iceland in the summer. But when I do go the other times of the year, I do take with me, just for precaution, some insulated underwear. I'm very big on cashmere sweaters because they're lightweight, they don't wrinkle, and they're very warm without the bulk. You can buy fantastic sweaters in Iceland while you're there because we know you're going to go shopping. So and they have wonderful gloves. There's a lot of sheep, so there's a lot of things made with wool, and they're very, very warm. Okay, that sounds terrific. Gosh, uh, scuba diving, any information about scuba diving? Uh, would, would that be available on the Iceland Travel website? We do have programs. This, in many cases, is going to be something that's going to be more of a custom, depending, because you're not always going to get that many people at one time who want to go and do uh, scuba. But yes, we can make all of those arrangements. We do have the information available for you. Unfortunately, it's not an activity that I've personally done. I've seen it. I've been there. I just haven't physically done it myself. And I, I was just shocked to think that you could, I, it just didn't come to my mind that you could go scuba diving. But absolutely, you can. So definitely, if you've got divers, this is another destination, I guarantee they haven't thought of. Mm, yeah, yeah. I would think this would sort of be out there on the the edge for for divers. That would be really exciting. If if people are looking for, if you happen to have clients who are real adrenaline junkies, shall we say, who are looking for extreme activities, we do have a complete list of those available that we can give for you. Um, it's, you know, it's not the mainstream. It's not for everyone. So I don't really put it in the webinar, but we certainly have some really great extreme activities to offer to your clients or to you, as a matter of fact. Yeah. 
um, visas. Is a visa required? Not for citizens of the United States. It's Good. very, very easy going through uh, the immigration and uh, controls in uh, Iceland. In fact, it, when people are using Iceland as the connecting point, if they're on Iceland Air connecting and continuing on, they can literally make a connection in 30 minutes. Far different than what you're looking at when you go through Heathrow to connect. It's very, very simple, and that's why a lot of people like to go through Reykjavik when they are making connections. Mm -hmm. yeah, sounds great. Um, let's see, if someone wants to fish for a day, what, mm -hmm. what sort of fish might they catch and would there be a way to have it cooked for them so they could enjoy it that same day? Okay, this is what I'm going to tell you. There is salmon. There is, I, I think it's called white trout. There's arctic char. I mean, there are a number of different, and deep sea fishing, and even in the summer months, fly fishing is very, very popular. And we can make those arrangements for you as far as having it cooked. Um, I'm not sure. I want to say that we could probably take it to your hotel and they would cook it for you. I would tend to think, knowing the Icelandic people and how friendly and warm they are, I tend to think that would be a real treat and that they would love to do that. And they would be so proud of you that you caught your own fish. But don't quote me on that. Um, but I, I think we can make some arrangements for you. Okay. Um, does Iceland travel offer igloo hotel stays? I'm not aware of igloo hotels. I know a lot of people think that there is an ice hotel in Iceland. One would think that just from the name, but the ice hotel is actually in Norway and Sweden. We have an ice bar. We don't have an ice hotel. And to my knowledge, we don't have an igloo type hotel. Okay. All right. Well, We're going to follow up on all of these questions. So if indeed I am incorrect, we just to let you uh, everyone know we do get your name and your question so if it's something that we need to follow up on we will definitely get back to you with the correct information mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very good so you know Judy uh, we could be here all day asking questions there's <laughs> there's still 78 in the queue even though we oh answered gosh. a lot um, so what I think that um, we want to know for the final thing and you talked about this a little bit but we'll make this our final question if you would please just review for us what the um, agent rate policy is and how agents might be able to get there to preview this before they okay if recommend they, it to their clients if the agents go on the Iceland air dot is website there is an agent login section there once you log in with Iceland Air, you can see the flights, you can see the agent rates, you can book your own flights. After you do that, once you have your flights booked, then please come to us at Iceland Travel. Tell us what type of land arrangements you want to make, or if you look at the scheduled tours on our website and find something appealing, we can certainly give you an agent rate on that. Okay. We want you Very to come good. to Iceland. I, I, I just want to say it's, it's retrospect at this moment, but every February, Iceland Air, Iceland Travel, they have a, what they call the Mid-Atlantic Summit, and it takes place every February in the beginning of the month. It is a long weekend. It is a four-day trip to Iceland. We bring in several hundred travel agents from all over the country. It is your opportunity to visit Iceland at a very reasonable rate. It is your hotel, it is your air, it is your meals, your tours, workshops. It's in the vicinity of $500 per agent and we do this every February. But it, they are set dates and you are traveling with a lot of other people. It's a great opportunity but if you want to do your own independent fam trip, as I said, we can arrange that for you as well through Iceland Air and Iceland Travel. Okay. Great, Judy. Well, thank you. I'm going to turn it back over to you now for anything you'd like to share with the audience before we close. 
I, I just want to say, number one, I am overwhelmed by the interest that we have seen on our webinars. Obviously, there is a tremendous interest in Iceland as a destination. It is fabulous. I hope that I've projected that to you, how much I love the destination and the people and all that it offers. And I want very much to be able to share that with you. If you want to, uh, as I say, have me come do a presentation or any one of our staff, we would certainly like to make that happen. Our goal is to make you look good and to help you come up with new and interesting products to present to your clients. So please, um, you've got my contact information. Let me hear from you. Let me know how we can help you. We have all kinds of information, maps, brochures, and all kinds of material to back up what we're saying. So hope to see you all in Iceland and to welcome your clients as well. So thanks again to everyone for joining us. And with that, we will say good day and conclude our webinar. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you very much. Goodbye.